meet a local publisher that's been in the business for almost five decades. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning with the Myrtle Beach Herald. We're focused on part two of the publisher and editor-in-chief of Coast and Alternatives News Magazines, Bill Darby. Good morning, Bill. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for inviting me again. Thanks so much for coming back in. It's so exciting all week. We've got an amazing lineup of guests. And, of course, your seg segways right in the middle of uh, four oh, incredible I, I women. Some top-notch people. I don't know how I slid in there. It's a it's a really exciting week. And to think, you know, we were visiting in October here at the studio, and there was so much of your life that I learned about. I think viewers learned a lot about you they never knew. And it was exciting to, I've been dying to get you back in for a part two. Well, thank you, thank you. I, we can't talk about everything, but most of my <laughs> <can talk> about. <laughs> there was one thing we really didn't talk about, Bill, which was your activities with the Republican Party, both in Horry County and statewide and the southeast. I think... Back in 1972, I saw that you'd uh, headed up the presidential mm -hmm. election here in Horry County. Well, it was before that, actually, Greg. We, in the 60s, uh, when Goldwater ran, which was a campaign that didn't go anywhere, but still, it did activate a lot of Southerners. And, and so we organized a party of Al Terrell and Bob Chestnut. There's about six of us. We met in a phone booth and decided we'd start a Republican Party. Mm. Mm. And I think I saw that same year, y'all had a, or in 72, even a little later, y'all had a 70% turnout. It was amazing. We had not, we had been Democratic for 107 years, and my partner, I, I, I got a partner, an Air Force uh, Major's wife, who would handle, actually, Bush's grandfather's campaign um, when she lived in Connecticut. She'd handed a senator from Montana, House of Representatives from Arizona, she, everywhere she went as an Air Force wife, and um, she came on board. It took a fight, you can imagine, to get a woman and a Yankee to, to co-chair with me. Um, the party wasn't too happy with that, but I said, you either give me Karen or we don't go. Mm -hmm. And she taught me everything I know about politics. I mean, she had uh, 345 uh, um, high school and college students as one of her committees. Is that she right? She was amazing. And our biggest coup of all, which we made national TV, radio, newspaper headlines, she, she got those kids out at 5 o'clock on Election Day. They had made signs for them, and we put two of them back to back at every crossroads in Ory County. Is and they were out there at 5 o'clock, and they stayed till 8. And, of course, TV, came, everything came in and covered it. And the Democrats tried to match us, but it was just too late. The kids had to go to school at 8. Yeah, sure. So it, it did get some national publicity. And we did hit, I think, 72 percent. Everybody was amazed, including me, and we did get invited to dinner with the president of the White House. Is that right? Yeah. What was that like, Bill? Well, it was shocking to say this. We were one of the top four counties, I think, in, in America to hit those figures. Um, and from a Democratic base, it did kind of surprise everybody. Mm -hmm. But it did, um, it kind of gave a put a fire under the Republicans that we did have a chance to organize a party and as of today the last election we had no county. I think there was 20 elections and we won 19 of them Golly. so it, it has some now it's good to have a good strong two-party system I think Horry County is stronger for it um, I don't think the Democrats would agree with us because we seem to be the majority at the mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. so so up till about 30 years ago the, the the county was almost oh yeah well the whole state was democratic i mean it just it that's the south you know it's been and slowly it's going more republican mm -hmm. but it's good we've got a good two-party system it's working quite well we saw last week senator rankin uh democratic senator mm -hmm. since 1993 serving myrtle beach make the announcement that as of this past friday he was going to file to, to, right. to run for re-election as, as a republican yes uh, we are getting some defections that's for sure and I think the demographics have changed, and then the, uh, the county was, I don't know if it was gerrymandered, but it was reconfigured, and I think Luke saw that it, there was more beach people than there were Conway people. And he's always been a kind of a moderate, so mm -hmm. we welcome him. Mm -hmm. You know, two weeks ago, Ed Young was with us for two days, kind of mm -hmm. doing a part one, part two, like we're now following up with you. And I remember Ed mentioning that he... He came in with with Thurman and Nixon there in '72. It was That's a true. big, uh, it was a big Nixon Thurman Young, and of course he was 
defeated in 74. Yeah, yeah, I worked a lot. Our headquarters, so we, we had we had five headquarters in the county. We had 15 phones, first phone banks anybody had ever seen. This, this girl knew it all. And we included Ed Young in everything we did, of course. Um, and Ed was very appreciative. He was the first, actually, Republican uh, to be elected uh, the same thing, like 107 years. Mm -hmm. And so it worked out quite well. And later, of course, we got the governorship. Uh, that's when I got on the state tourist board. Um, right. And worked with Governor Edwards uh, actually for five years. He was in only four. I snuck in an extra year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good to recognize that at times, uh, because of folks' commitment to a certain group, party party lines don't uh, necessarily keep someone on or off a board. I mean, they no, want to keep you on because uh, you've done true. a lot. Well, I think I just hit out, to tell you the truth, because uh, at the next uh, governor's convention, I think it was in Hilton Head, they got up and announced that I was no longer on. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's when the new party comes in, they get new people. It didn't bother me a bit. Well, I think I saw you were also on the board of Travel South. Yeah, I served uh, on their board for roughly eight years, I think mm -hmm. I was on that board. And then... Uh, well, when the peer was in, another good Republican, I was I chaired the um, Congressional Tourist Board for a couple of years under him, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You remember, obviously, last time you were visiting with us, uh, we talked about your arrival in Horry County almost 50 years ago, Bill. True. To, to get involved as a sales manager first and later the general manager for yeah. the Horry Herald prior to launching uh, Coast. Uh, yeah, I did both the last year I was there. I ran the paper, which we did turn into the biggest weekly in the state and uh, the gross went up to six figures so I said gee if I can do that for Mr. Lim Winesett who was our publisher from Marion uh, so the last year I ran the paper for 50 hours a week and ran coast for 50 hours a week uh, not much sleep involved wow Bill you know, what was that like in well it, you know when you're young and full of vinegar and you know the other part uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it you know I loved it I just I've always been in the press, delivering papers, worked on the Tiger at Clemson as a sports editor, and I was uh, the ad manager for TAPS, just a lot of things in college, and um, took the only advertising course that Clemson had. They had a one-hour course, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I think a dairy professor taught it, but he was very good. He was one of the top marketing people in dairy, so mm -hmm. he knew advertising and marketing, and mm -hmm. I took the only course under him. Well, so Coast Coast Magazine actually launched then in 56, 57? 50, yeah. I moved here 55, 56. Yeah, we put started in 56. As we've been, been doing it ever since. So you all will be celebrating almost five decades, or currently almost five decades. It'll yeah. be five decades yeah, in right. two Next years. That's right. Next year we'll be in our, in our 50th year. That's amazing. That is incredible, Bill. <laughs> Talk about the transformation of Coast and how it had grew so quickly to be such a monster in the area. I think you said at one time it actually got national fame. Yeah, we did get some national uh, fame, as you call it. Uh, but we uh, actually, um, Edward Burroughs uh, kind of assisted me. I went to Edward with this idea, and I had his um, nephew draw up the ad, so he was kind of a sandbag. I lived with his mother, but the man <laughs> had no chance at all, and his daughter took me and said, Bill's got this great idea. And so he, they bought the center spread uh, for the pavilion and their other enterprises. And with that, uh, it grew from 16 pages, I'd say eight years later, we were doing 200 pages a week. Wow. And when you say a week, you're talking about in prime months, or, or was yeah, that? Yeah, that was the yeah, prime months. So uh, mm -hmm. we actually published six months, and then we really didn't do anything for six months. And then eventually it got to six months weekly, six months uh, uh, as a monthly, mm -hmm. so there were year-round. Uh, but eventually we did a weekly year-round. Is that right? Yeah. Wow, what year would that have been, Bill? Oh, well, that's where in the late 70s, I guess by then, the beach mm -hmm. was just booming, you know. And uh, Actually, we joined we the Magazine Publishers Association, asked us to join. We went there with Time and, you know, Esquire and all these huge magazines. I'm still shocked. But they said they were reaching out to smaller publishers, and we were the first actually southern publication ever be taken it only i was a 99th member and they'd been in business 50 years is that right so they were shocked and for that period when we were running around seven uh just 200 pages a week we had more pages than any actually magazine in america if you multiply that it comes to a lot of pages wow but i had a staff of about 29 people 
Is that right? Yeah. All right here. Now, yeah. were the offices in Conway, or did you no, move over to here. Myrtle? No, we, we, we were always in Myrtle Beach. I mean, the Herald was over there, mm -hmm. but I lived six months at the beach, actually with Mrs. Burroughs, and then six months back in Conway. Mm. It was a great life. <laughs> That's fascinating, Bill. When you think back to the, the time, obviously, of arriving in the county, of course, you grew up in South Carolina. Yeah, I'm a native of South Carolina. I've lived all over Texas, Japan, Canada, Europe, New York State. So mm -hmm. I have been out of the market a bit, but my roots are here. You know, obviously, when we were together last time, and a lot of viewers may not have caught that interview, talk a little bit about uh, the attending Clemson, Bill, and then later going off. Uh, you attended Clemson finished in 1950 and then went into the service. Yeah, yeah. I, um, Clemson and I have a kind of a strange relationship. I'm not the best military man, but I did get my, uh, in fact, when I got my um, bar, as we call it, got into the into the Army, the colonel that gave it to me said, Darby, I'm damn glad to see you leaving. And I said, I'm damn glad to be leaving. <laughs> uh, but I just didn't fit in. But I, I went to the Clemson dinner last night. I mean, I'm a true blue Clemson man. It just was the military, which they don't have anymore. Is that right? But I did serve a, a, a couple of years as a commanding officer. In mm. the, um, actually, in, I went to the Korean War, but you know, I never got to Korea. I stayed in Japan. And it was a kind of a fluke accident that you ended up here in Horry County. What? Uh, there was a very... Oh yeah, I was my. I had an uh, offer from the University of Missouri, having one of the better journalism schools, and they offered me a teaching fellowship to come and because I had a GI Bill and I was actually going to make money going to school but I had a uh, an operation that turned badly on me and I had to go back in for some more repairs and um, so I had to call them and say I couldn't come so I was reading the state newspaper it was classified and had ad manager for the, the horrible Herald as we call it the Ori Herald so I said well, that's a good experience go over there for three or four months and I got so intrigued, and then Mr. Winesett made me the general manager after three weeks. And uh, so I was just, I had a, it, it actually had a circulation of about 1,400, which is pretty pitiful. And it did, um, it did, you know, maybe ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a year. Mm, a <laughs> year. A year. Mm. And uh, he bought it, and we bought it back. It was, a, like, the third oldest paper in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, but it was not too good when I got a hold of it. It turned out to be quite, I had a good staff too, very good staff. Was there an inspiration earlier in life that prompted you to possibly know that you wanted to get into the publishing business? Or Well, I'd worked in high school. I delivered papers when I was a kid, starting about at seven, and I delivered uh, the state paper, in fact, and did that at Clemson too when I was up there as mm -hmm. a student. Um, and then worked on the high school paper, and, and at Clemson I got in anything I could in the media field, it opens a lot of doors and a lot of perks, as you well know. And so that's the reason I stayed in it. And I, and I like creating things. You know, mm -hmm. that was a, a creative soul came to the surface, I guess, and I've been in it ever since. Bill, speaking of your creative side, talk a little bit about, uh, for the viewers, share with them that, that business you set up while you were at Clemson, that, that funny little setup that really became competitive with the uh, school store. Yeah, it did, yeah. I, I told my mom that I'd just like to see if I could put myself through Clemson for one semester. So we set up a food uh, distribution to the 3,500 cadets who couldn't get out after 8.30, only seniors could. And uh, we went in competition with the place called the Juice Shop, mm -hmm. and only seniors could go. And trying to get a senior to bring anything was impossible. So, yeah, we ended up with uh, 10 or 12 salespeople. We, we uh, had homemade everything. Um, and we uh, we averaged making a hundred bucks a night each. No way. And we didn't do a lick. I mean, we had suppliers and veterans' wives who were putting themselves who would make make special sandwiches and cigarettes, um, candy, soft drinks. It, it turned out to be a biggie. We put the juice shop right out of business. So I got called in by the president of college, and he said, Bill, you know, it's dangerous what you're doing. All that paper and everything that wrapped in. A fire hazard. I said, well, we put that right in the trash cans in the room. He said, I said, it's really the juice shop I'm hurting. He said, yes, and that's the that's the athletic department. And if I was smarter, I would have said, let me go into partnership with them because I was doing ten times what they were doing. Yeah. But they, they closed me right down. Wow. Yeah. My mother wrote the editorials of the paper and said, you know, anyway, it didn't work out. But we were tonning it, I'll tell you. Because yeah. 100 bucks a day in those days was really yeah, that for was a kid that was only, you know, 18 years for old. For you and your partner, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that was each of us doing that. Right? 
Bill, mm -hmm. obviously Coast and Alternatives, when did you launch Alternatives? Coast is around almost now five yeah, decades. Yeah, Alternatives was Alternatives actually launched? is in its uh, 18th year, and I wanted to show that because Mrs. Bush is on our cover for the big heart. I'd hold that up a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah, the heart, uh, and it took us about three weeks to get that. She actually wrote me a little dialogue and sent it down to me. Very mm -hmm. nice. That's good. And I want yeah. to congratulate you, uh, too, Greg, for your organization and the heading up of that for the last two years. You all broke all records at a quarter of a million dollars in one night. That's amazing. It was a big night, it absolutely. It was a super night. It really was. The Marriott really did a good job for us. They did. Tammy's going to be with us at the end of the week to wrap up and to highlight some of the exciting uh, turnout, both mm -hmm. that night as well as line, getting back in there next year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was that was a first-class operation up there. Mm -hmm. Bill, talk a little bit about, you know, there's so many things that we could highlight in your life, and I think back to the times where, when you were pr particularly active on the tennis scene. And traveled all over all over the country, as well as we. I think we've talked about some international travels. Well, that you've done. It, I wasn't really on a team. The magazine publishers were big in tennis, mm -hmm. and of course, I own part of a club here, which is now the Grand Dunes Club. Um, and so we played year round. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the publishers, most of them, Chicago, New York, they didn't have the facilities they have today. So I got to be pretty good. I won the club, city, and the county championship one year. And so I was, I got to know some great publishers that just wanted to play tennis with me. Mm -hmm. So I did play all over the world. We had conferences in Brussels and Paris. And we had one in, uh, I think, Copenhagen. And it was all over America to the top. And we actually had one in Washington where the president asked us in. Because this organization, Magazine Publishers, represented about 400 million circulation. Is that and right? It was. I was shocked as I got taken in, but it really helped me a lot because I was dealing with the top people in publishing. Mm -hmm. And then later I was taken into the Federation International of the Periodical Press, which is headquartered in Paris, mm -hmm. which has a billion circulation. That's all the major magazines in the world. Wow. And from that, I mean, I had audiences with the Pope. I had tea and crumpets with the King and Queen of Sweden. I mean, I was just shocked at the, 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 what these people could do. But when you bring a billion circulation anywhere, people will definitely meet with you. <laughs> Absolutely. So it worked out. Well, yeah. I love that travel. And, I, and I, of course, I had a, you know, I was married to a European, so we spent a lot of time in Europe, too. Right. That's exactly right. And you all have two girls together, Bill. Yeah, yeah. One uh, just uh, was on Sex and the City just eight weeks ago, uh, and now she's, she went to work for Faith and Hope for a little while. Now she's doing law and order, but she's behind the scenes. She's not on stage. Right. And my other daughter teaches over in a private school in Bishopville and has three daughters. Mm -hmm. More girls. More girls. Golly, Bill. <laughs> surrounded by women. Yeah, That's you're amazing. Right. You know, I picked up a recent edition of Alternatives and saw some hilarious questions in there. I, I guess this is a normal column that goes out, such as, why don't you ever see the headline, Psychic Wins Lottery? Which is a great idea. Right. Why is it that doctors call what they do practice? And that was a, a hilarious one. You know, that a little indestructible black box right. that's uh, used on airplanes. Why can't they make the whole plane out of the same substance? That is a great idea, yeah, Bill. Yeah. It's called Strange But True. It's just some odd facts, and it's actually one of our syndicated columns out of Florida, but we get a great response from that idea. Oh, yeah. Now, when did you launch Alternatives, Bill? Alternatives is in its 19th year. Okay, 19th great. Year. Sometime in the 80s, whenever that is. What's the prime difference between Alternatives and Coast? Well, Alternatives tends to be more locally oriented, even though we integrate a lot of the same stories. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a survey, and the tourists said they didn't want to know what locals were doing, and we asked right. them locals, and they said they didn't want to know what tourists so we. We did a sort of a combination, and uh, we are members of the Alternative Weekly Network, which is uh, 186 of us with 8.6 million circulation. Mm -hmm. uh, Village Voice in New York, Premier in Boston, Creative Loafing in Atlanta, Charlotte. So uh, we get a lot of national ads. In fact, I'm running a national beer ad right now, Ice House. Is that um, right? And we have done. We work. We work for them. They work for us. We are planning a Myrtle Beach section in a group of these magazines starting this fall. I saw you all recently pumping a new singles alternative like us. Yeah, well, most alternatives they have a single section. We're just waiting to get our websites up to that level where we will have a major a singles. We, we started singles oh, some years ago, and uh, the gal that I had running it had to leave, and we kind of took it on, put it on hold, but now we're back, and sometime a lot of part of uh, 
this month, the first of April, we'll be in full swing with a single section. Great, great. Bill, if someone if someone wanted to get an idea from you to get some business advice, if they were thinking about getting into the publishing business, mm -hmm. launch it a, a biweekly publication or based off of your years back at the Ori Herald prior to launching Coast, uh, what would be some of the experiences that you'd want to pass on to them about getting into the publishing business or just into business in general since you've owned well, so many businesses? Well, publishing I know best. Uh, we work with a lot of interns. In fact, we're looking for interns right now, and I always tell college and high school students, and that really looks good on the resume if you've actually done some practical work. And uh, it, you start as a grunt, so to speak, and work your way up, but it is great training to work on a small publication. We don't segment over to old bits, so you have to actually do a little bit of everything when you work for us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, which is so important. It's so funny, Bill, to hear you say publishing I know best as I look down on something that someone had created for me, president of the Myrtle Beach Convention Bureau, the Resort Packs Delivery Service, the Hirsch Rent-A-Car in Myrtle Beach and Florence, Resort Real Estate and Resort Topography and Graphics. You've been involved in a lot of businesses. Bill. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, we had six corporations going for a while there, and uh, I just enjoyed. I, I have a short uh, interest span, so I like mm -hmm. to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I'm still in three or four things right now. I've got the digital company still working with us out of Seoul, Korea. Right. Uh, we've had a little problem with the Seoul situation and the SARS in China, so it put us about a year behind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you when you sit back, Bill, can can you when you think of role models in your life, are there any that really stand out right now? Um, well, I think Mr. Forbes would be if I had to pick somebody. Malcolm, I always wanted to be Malcolm Forbes. You know, he, he lived a good life, big collector. I'm a big collector. I'm not on his plane in any way, of course, and of course he's now deceased. But he was such a successful publisher, and of course Forbes is one of the top magazines in the world. Mm -hmm. Now that he's deceased, do you think there's any one person you'd like to meet who's either living or dead? Maybe it would be Mr. Forbes. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've met his son, of course, and worked with him a little bit, uh, but I never did get to meet Malcolm, but uh, that would have been a joy to go with on his Highlander yacht, which I think was 125 feet and went around the world many times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You think about those inspirations early in life, they'll get started. Obviously, just that the setup there at Clemson that o opened the doors for you and a, a partner to launch a business, mm -hmm. obviously growing up in Fort Mott. Yeah. It, yeah, it, um, I don't know. I just always had a desire to try something new as frequently as I possibly could. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bill, we got about three minutes. Mm -hmm. I was sitting there thinking about uh, last time we were together, we were talking about something that was really hot, to topical mm -hmm. at that time, and still is very much so, John Casarda had just been into the market uh, right, to, to make yeah. a presentation regarding a regional airport or just airports in general. What, what was something well, that's, that was that's moving right ahead. Uh, they've uh, the county and the city have put up uh, 200,000. They're asking NISA out of Florence to put up another 200, and the state to put up 600,000 to see the possibilities of having a regional airport, a real world-class airport, out in the county. We were going out on. 22, about uh, 20 minutes away, mm -hmm. and we needed um, three to 6,000 acres to do a proper job. But in the meantime, I know they're hurting because the, the business is growing so fast. So we contacted a firm in um, San Francisco who does temporary structures. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they're coming in next week, and I'm putting a group together to go out and check it out. They could build a uh, temporary structure that would be 30% um, uh, would, would increase our capacity, 30%. They could build it in 70 days and for less than a half million bucks. Is that so? Right? That, we think that's going to be a nice asset, so we don't uh, not push so hard to try to get the, the, this other terminal they're talking about up. And it might even help us to delay that a little bit and uh, maybe plan to put more money in the regional airport. Mm -hmm. To really set the stage to make that happen. And when you say a regional airport, mm -hmm. have, have there been discussions with the PD area, with the Wilmington area, to really oh, make yeah. this? Oh, well, yeah. I, I had, uh, yeah, Frank. Uh, uh, Willis, uh, mayor of Florence, called me some months ago and said, Bill, you win. You're going to have the regional airport over there. And we've talked to Wilmington. Wilmington seems to think that they don't need us. But if you go to the airport today, you'll find a lot of North Carolina cars because we have better service mm -hmm. and cheaper prices. And so uh, from what Dr. Casada said, he's my expert. He said if we built it and we had an Oppenheimer study uh, a few years ago, they said within um, 
five years after we opened that regional airport, it, we would have three, three to five million people a year off. Wow. Life. We now have 600,000. You know, it was so exciting. I think you were at that event for Henry Brown, hearing him say that I drive up to Myrtle Beach regularly to get on Hooters Air to fly up to Baltimore. Sure. I mean, folks drive up from Columbia or down from Wilmington mm -hmm. or all over to take advantage of some of the amazing airlines now servicing the Myrtle Beach International right, right. Airport. We're up to 12. And it used to be called a hub, now we call it a regional airport, and we, we'd be the first place to have one, and I think the only place that really one would go in, in South Carolina. Bill, lastly, if you aren't currently the publisher and editor-in-chief of Coast and Alternatives News Magazines, what do you think you'd be doing? I'd more like to like to travel and, and write. I mean, I've spent so much time away from South Carolina, and I enjoy travel a great deal. I hadn't done much lately, but I would like to. My last trip was to Seoul, Korea for about a month, uh, about this time last year. Mm. Traveling and writing. Writing. Serial entrepreneur. You think about someone arriving in Horry County almost five decades ago and really making Horry County, helping, helping it recognize its opportunity to grow, seeing the strengths in the area, and helping those be achieved through Coast and now Alternatives News Magazine almost in its second decade. Bill, yeah. thanks so much for being with Thank us this great. morning. All right. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. We want to thank Bill Darby, a Myrtle Beach publishing legend who inspires so many still to make a difference in their hometown and in their county and in their state for making today's Carolina people so special.